Um, we've got Sinon, who's been an inspiration to myself and to many, many others. He's out there on the field making it happen every day, and now he's going to speak speaking for us next hour or so. So please can I have a massive round of applause for Sinon. Thank you. Everybody. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I'm still on. <laughs> um, I suppose a little bit about how I got into it. 9-11 was a big one for me. Um, I, I realised there was something wrong when I first seen it. But of course then they hit you with the media barrage of Osama Bin Laden allegedly in a cave admitting to it and all the stuff that comes along and it, was, it wasn't until a few months later I seen another video which sort of questioned it a little bit and here we are, this is how I got to here. The debt side of things, I've been dealing with that for a number of years now and um, others like Rob have uh, been doing similar sort of thing, that parking tickets. When I started with parking tickets I was the first one doing it and it was a piece of easiness. <laughs> Not wanting to swear, of course. Basically, all we did back then is I, I, I deliberately went out and got parking tickets to test the theory. And I, I went out and got them and, and wrote across them at a 45 degree angle in red, uh, refuse for cause. You can add another three or four lines if you want to, but that's all you really needed. And I'd send it off and I'd get a letter back from the council saying, due to a technical error, your ticket's been cancelled. <laughs> Now, it's not a technical error at all. It's, un it's due to contract law, because when they stick a ticket on your car, they're actually offering you a contract. But most don't see it like that. They think it's a ticket, a penalty charge notice. Some even refer to it as not being a fine. Well, if you go on the Nottinghamshire Council website, you'll find that they refer to it as a fine on their website. Um, so, under contract law, because you've rejected the contract, that should be it. What the council realised, because... I do talk quite loud and um, I did tell everybody about it and they all started doing it. The council soon realised they were going to lose a lot of money so they decided to ignore contract law. But therefore everything they do from that point on is void. But they'll carry on regardless, they'll send it to the private members club known as Northampton Bulk Centre where they will issue a, uh, a warrant of execution unlawfully, no judge or, or magistrates there. And if you've even, you've even phone calls on YouTube where they phoned up and ask them if there's anybody with any legal training, and of course the answer is always no. So how can they issue a warrant of execution? Because they don't sign it. It's all down to liability, and you'll find this on debt letters as well, and bank letters. You'll see, I mean, I've got some classics in here, signed by uh, the name of the company. Well, sorry, but that's, that's not, that's not the, good. The reason that we ask for signatures on letters is because if you're signing it, you're saying everything in this is legal and lawful and I'm going to sign it and I'll take full liability and responsibility if it's not. This is why they don't sign them. Parking tickets now are, can be trickier because you have to push it a bit further now. You might have to deal with bailiffs. Not necessarily at the door. I, I've got these tickets and I've got a stack of stack more bailiff letters at home. Literally, I've got a pile this big. Um, well, let it, these aren't even opened, but they've not. To be, to be fair, they've not written to me in near, nearly a year now, uh, so I think they got the idea. And I, I don't know why, but I've never been visited by a bailiff ever. Maybe because I, I was the first to bang out the denial of access letters, uh, notices, which basically point out that if you come and you step foot on our land, you will be <coughs> trespassing. The important part to remember here is once you sent that letter off, and on it, on, on the notice, it says. Uh, notice to agent is notice to principal, which means whoever you send it to, they have to tell everybody else in their organisation. It's down to them to tell them. And if they don't tell them, well, whoever comes to the door or, or tre trespasses, they're breaking the law. They've been told to tell them. If they haven't told them, that's their fault. However, who comes still is breaking the law. And if he steps foot on your land, he's not just committing a, a civil offence. It then becomes aggravated trespass, which is a criminal offence. Now, that's never happened to me, but if it did, the first thing I would do would be arrest the bailiff on the, chop, on the stop. Cops tend not to like to arrest bailiffs. However, if you arrest them, they have to act then. And they have to arrest the bailiff, because you are acting lawfully. You're arresting somebody who's committed a crime. They would rather just ignore that this crime has been committed 
and hopefully the bailiff will just go away. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They're getting more and more desperate, bailiffs are, <coughs> and they're resorting to worse tactics than ever. But I'm not going to spend too long on that. You can read all about that in the forum. There's loads of links to it. Um, one of the things I talk about as well is pens, different coloured inks. Right. The reason I talk about the different coloured inks, here you've got four colours, is because they all mean something different. If you get to fill in any government paperwork, they'll always ask you to fill it in in black ink. Now that's because of the Sescovy Act of 1666, where you're all declared dead, and you had till the age of seven to fill in the correct paperwork to prove that you were alive. Well, guess what? They never told us about that. <laughs> so we didn't have much chance. But that's why they get you to fill in in black. It's not, they will tell you, it's because it shows up better on the scanning equipment or the, print, the, the, the anything rubbish. It's because you're dead and by writing in black, you're admitting that you're dead. Occasionally you'll get a blue ink. Very, very occasionally. And for those, that I'm sure you all know, but blue ink signifies the sea, as we're all under admiralty law, not the law of the land. Um, I, I sign everything in either red or purple. Now red signifies you're a flesh and blood living man. You can even put your thumbprint using your own blood if you want to, but you know, you, you, once you've pricked yourself a few, few times, it's not good. So I just use a red ink pad now. Or purple. Now purple's a very good one. Anyone know what the purple ink is for? Yeah, yeah, someone said it. it's because sovereign. The Queen always signs in purple, except of course she's not the Queen. No, she's not. This is just the games that we, we, we have to learn and play with to get down where we're going. Because these are the sort of snidey tricks they get up to. It's all to there to, to confuse you, smoke and mirrors all the way down the line. When I started looking into this years ago, um, I actually had time to do research then and I found out so much, it was unbelievable. But this year and the last couple of years has been so much more come to the front. We're going to talk about dealing with debts, because you've all got them, but debts or banks, the only difference is it's a letter. You've got, you've got a bank letter to deal with banks, uh, credit cards, th people like um, Provident, catalogues, they're all bank letters because they're the original alleged creditor. When it gets passed on to a debt collector, we deal with debt letters. Now, they're all going through um, updating at the moment. I don't know if they're fully updated yet, but there's other things that have been added to the letters. But what we do, we simply, you know, someone sends us a, a bill and they say, you owe us £2,000 for this credit card bill. If it's a bank, we'd reply with the, the bank letters, giving them 10 days. Now, it doesn't have to be 10 days. 10 days is just a reasonable amount of time. It can be longer, it can be shorter. The shortest it can be is three days. Because of contract law, you, you're allowed three days to reject a contract, so the shortest you can have it down to is three days. But I'd just like to point out to everyone here, it doesn't take 30 days to complete the process. It takes 20 days. Because you start off on day one, 10 days later you send letter two, 10 days later you send letter three. That's it. You've got them in tacit in 20 days. And if you shorten the dates, which you, you can do, sometimes they'll come after you and they'll say, we're going to have you here in such and such day. You can shorten it down. So you, the quickest you can have them in a tacit agreement is six days. You start the letter the first day, three days later you send letter two, three days later set, send letter, letter three. But that's only if you need to. And, and don't worry if you go over the ten days. I mean, I once forgot for over six weeks. You know, I, I wasn't as organised then. And then I came across that I'd sent letter two and I thought, well, where's letter three? And there it was still they had printed what it, ready to go, so I just sent it off. Um, but to be fair, they hadn't sent, replied to me after letter two anyway. Another thing you need to know is, you're not wanting a reply. Don't wait for a reply. When your time scale comes up, you send the next letter. If they don't reply, it's because they don't know how to. Or, that if they do reply, they're going to get send you some sort of bullshit to try and confuse you. The, the most funniest one I've seen was the Bills of Exchange Act, 1882, is not an English statute, it's actually an American statute. Well. <laughs> Go on the UK Gov site and I think you'll find that they're wrong there. But this is the sort of stuff they do. They'll use all sorts of lies and tricks to confuse you. If you're dealing with this sort of thing, the one thing I would suggest you do, first of all, is read in the forum about who you're dealing with. So if it's Lao, go to the debt collector section, look in Lao, read how people have dealt with Lao and what the responses have been. What this does, it will mean that you know what responses are going to come. 
So when you get this response, and it's identical to what these have said, there you go, it's just, just a template letter, that's all it is. You don't even need to bother about it, just carry on with the next letter. Sometimes they'll make all sorts of rubbish up saying this is lawful, blah, blah, blah. Well, if this isn't lawful, why is the site grown so dramatically and why are so many success stories popping up on the site? It, it, it may not be lawful in their eyes, but it is lawful. They, they go down the legal track side of things and they'll always try and knock you back onto the Consumer Credit Act because they can deal with you on that. If you say, yes, I want to <laughs> under sex and such and such of that act, I'm not saying it's not good to do that because sometimes you can you can find ways through. One of the easiest things to ask for is a copy of the original agreement. It's very unlikely you will ever see this. Uh, they, the government realised that everyone was w wising up to the scam that was going on, and so they then brought in a law so they could use a reconstituted agreement, which is basically a, a blank agreement they just put your details on. Well, that's because, I'm sure most of you know, that's because they securitise your agreement. So whatever you, say you took a £10,000 loan, you go to the bank, they say, here, fill this loan out. You fill it out, you sign it. As soon as you sign it, you change it into a promissory note or a security instrument, which the bank then sells on or securitizes. So you actually create the money they pretend to loan you. So why do they use a uh, an agreement and not a contract? Because in an agreement, they don't have to tell you what they're doing. In a contract, they would have to say, what happens is when you sign that, you actually create the money and we just monetize it for you. Now, if they said that, you'd go, well, I'm not paying no interest. Ah, here's 100 quid. S securitise my £10,000, give me 9900 Now, that's a fair deal. But, of course, they don't do this because they want you to pay it back and interest. And the only way they can sell it is because whoever buys it knows you're going to pay it back plus interest. So it's, a, it's still money for them. So once you realise that you actually create the money that they pretend to loan you, do you think it's fair to loan, uh, to give, pay them anything back? Does anyone think that would be fair to pay them anything back? No. Exactly. The, the definite is, is silent. Or well, the silence is deafening, whichever way around it goes. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, like I said, we send the three letters and we just ask for simple things like you know, the, the original agreement, uh, original signed contract, because they don't exist, because they commit fraud daily. So if they haven't got a contract, you don't have to pay them back. This year, and particularly this last couple of, well, 18 months to a year, more and more things have been coming out. In fact, we had a, a solicitor on the site that was teasing us, saying, oh, you've not found it yet, you've not found it yet. And we were searching like nobody's business for whatever this legislation was. Eventually, we came up with a deed of assignment. Deed of assignment is a very powerful document. It has to go whenever any bank or credit card or whatever Lend or sells on your, your agreement to anyone else, it needs to have a deed of assignment. And it needs, if it then gets sold on again, it needs a separate deed of assignment. So there needs to be a deed of assignment each time it's sold on. This deed of assignment, and they, they will often write back to you saying, we have a notice of assignment. You're not interested in the notice of assignment. It's the deed of assignment. That's where all the good stuff is. And they'll often say it's uh, due to privacy or technicalities or all sorts of rubbish. They don't want you to see it because they know that they commit fraud. To, to get a proper working deed of assignment, they need to have seen the original promissory note when they accepted it, and they never see the promissory note, the, the agreement, because it's securitised. So straight away, they break the law, and they know that. This is one of the thing, big things that started to really rock the financial institution when we started asking for this. Then over the last, well, this year, so it's last three or four months, we've started to also ask for the Delegation Novation Agreement. Now, some of you, if it's been on the site, you'll have heard of the Novation Agreement, the Deed of Novation, the Instrument of Novation. There's all different connotations around it, but it seems the correct term to use is Delegation Novation Agreement. The Novation Agreement basically is a tri-party agreement that everyone has to adhere to. So, Bank A sells to Debt Collector B. So Bank A has to be part of this trilateral agreement, this tripartite agreement, which basically says, that, yes, we agree to selling the, the debt to this de debt collector. Debt collector has to be part of this tripartite agreement, saying, yes, we agree to accept this uh, agreement. Anyone know who the third party is? Yourself, yourself. Yourself. You have to agree to it. And of course, you're never going to do that, so that means they're, they're screwed. They are screwed. 
I haven't actually tried that particular <laughs> term yet, simply because I don't deal with debt, debt collectors like that anymore. Nowadays, you tried it. You give me the advice. I, I, don't, I, I never give advice, I just share my experiences. <laughs> 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 and, and yet, there's a, a sm um, against the system, he, he came across it, he'd been talking to a, uh, a solicitor friend of his, and he provided the information. So, all respect to him. It does seem to be working really well. Now, there's a lot of talk about them changing statutes and acts to get round all the stuff we're doing. At the end of the day, we still ask for the deed of assignment, the delegation novation agreement. They can't provide them because they're fraudulent. It doesn't matter what they do, that's fraud. Every single day, every time they're committing fraud. I, I actually believe that we could probably just ask for them two things on, on their own uh, and we'd still get the same result. But we know the letters work, so it's up to you if you want to try it, be the guinea pig and try it. I don't have to actually write to any of them anymore. Um, but if you want to, the ones that have tried it have said they've had great success. Some say they even after letter one, that they're just washing the hands of it because of this, the information we're asking for now that they can't provide. So again, if you want, I'll, I'll just go through it. It's the deed of assignment and the delegation novation agreement. They're the two main things you need to be asking for. And if you're asking for them, I've got a very uh, strong feeling they won't be hanging around you too long. They might send you some paperwork trying to say, oh, this is private or whatever. At the end of the day, if they don't send you what you're asking for, you've got to ask yourself why. I've actually altered the letters and I've put them into all three letters. In fact, the last one, I've put them in asking for it, but at the end of it, I say, too late. <laughs> Because by then they're too late. They've had the chance to send it, and they can't send it. They won't send it. They know everyone's waking up to the fact that they're committing fraud daily. Yeah. So do you just stop paying on loan payments and then see what happens? What the last one I dealt with for a friend was for Provident. It was for about eight hundred quid, um, and it, it then, and then it was Greenwoods. It was actually Greenwoods who were part of Provident. It's all a, a Provident been going since 18 whenever, which I looked into, which was quite surprising. And they, they own Greenwoods and they own lots of these little uh, come to your door debt collector type things. And um, my friend, they, 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 they had every intention of paying them, but then, as I'm sure we're all aware, things happen and you don't have the money anymore. So they asked me about it and I said, yes, use the debt collector, uh, no, use the, uh, the bank letters on them, which they did, they went off, sent the bank letters and they got all sorts of bump back, it's you know, a standard thing, they'll send you bump to try and confuse you, they'll send you your payment lists and all sorts of stuff like that. Irrelevant whatever they send. All you're interested in is what you've asked for and if they don't give you what you've asked for, then anything they send to you is to be treated as a non-reply. Because all it is, will be, will be to try and confuse you, to make you think that, oh perhaps I've done something wrong here. No, no, you haven't done anything wrong but they will try and confuse you. This is why I say get on the site, read whoever you're dealing with, read as much as you can about them. If, if it doesn't have your particular company, read, if it's a debt collector, read in the debt collector sections because they all use the same template letters. Whether you believe that or not, they do all use the same template letters and a lot of them have um, prepared solicitor letters. A lot of them have in-house solicitors. Um, with the solicitors, most solicitors are easy to get rid of. Most of them aren't solicitors, they're just debt collectors pretending to be a solicitor. They may even have some legal training. As I was saying, with Provident and then Green, well, well, Greenwoods, it then went on to their in-house uh, debt collector, E.K. Edrup. And I actually thought I was going to get taken to court. I really did. I thought, so yeah, it even happens to me. I go, oh, well. So they got this thing, say, we're taking you to court. So I just carried on with the letter. Yeah, we're taking you to court. So I carried on with letter three. Yeah, we're taking you to court. So I build them. Um, then I got a letter from them saying, we'd like to offer you a discount. Now, whenever anyone offers you a discount, you've got them. If they could legally, lawfully enforce anything on you, would they give you a discount? Not a chance. So if ever you get offered a discount, you've won. Uh, again, don't forget, though, you don't wait to get a reply from them. You carry it on. If after letter three... You've sent that. If it crosses in the post, it's up to you whether you send them a bill or just give them the benefit of the doubt. It's, that's entirely your sort of choice. If it's a week or so after, even if it's dated before, because they do that an awful lot, they'll date it, say, today and send it you in about two weeks' time uh, and giving you ten days to reply. It's like already passed it. That's a common thing. That's just to try and put the, the shits up you to try and go, oh, pay up, I'll pay up. It's all rubbish. 
I've got them for, in here from debt, debt collectors, solicitors. I'll just actually show this one at the top because this is rather interesting. If you haven't seen my um, um, little clip where they came round and stole my gas meter, you should go on the uh, Sri Lanka Sea and see, you'll see the, where they actually come round and stole my gas meter. They, they, they basically, we, I don't want to go down this too far, so, you know, go drag me down there, please. <laughs> basically, we had gas electric and it was coming in. It had been a reasonable price and I was quite happy to pay it. Then, um, just before Christmas, we got a, a letter from a debt collector. Not in our name, I hasten to add. It was in somebody else's that used to live there. And it was for gas. I think it was for £725 something pence. So I thought, hmm, well that's a bit odd, it's not for us. Anyway, I'll just put it aside. Anyway, a few weeks later we get a gas bill. And the gas bill has suddenly gone up from what it was, which was, very, yeah, I was quite happy to pay that, it had gone up to £725 and something <laughs> pence. And now, I, I don't claim to be a genius, but even I put two and two together and realised they were trying to bill me for someone else's. So, I told them to stick it, and I accepted for value. We, 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 I had no intention of going down the A4 for V route. This just was, I thought, right, well, let's try it. I've heard about it, I've read up about it, and I went for it. And I did it on everything, gas, water, electric. I wouldn't recommend you do it on gas and electric. Not unless you're fully aware of what you're doing and know what they're going to try. Um, water worked piece of, it worked simple as anything. It, it doesn't now. Again, I guess I was one of the first to send them a, a promissory note to pay for their uh, the bill, um, and they added it onto the next bill they sent me. So I took what I'd paid them in the previous promissory note and sent them another promissory note for the, the bit different. And then they just stopped writing to me, stopped sending me bills. Now I believe it's because. They, a, they cash the promissory notes. One of the things we found out is any company with more than £2 million of assets can cash promissory notes. So all these companies, if you look into them, will, will, can cash promissory notes. Now, most of them, and this is where you have to do your work here because I'm not doing it all. If you look in the articles of association of your gas company, your electric company, your water company, you will find nine times out of ten they talk about they do accept promissory notes. They just don't want to accept your promissory notes. <laughs> so if the Queen sent them one, I've got a feeling it'd be no problem, ching ching, but obviously they don't want us to know that. And the reason that they should accept them is because the country's bankrupt and it's been bankrupt for 70 or some are suggesting even longer years. It was bankrupt 1939 when World War II started. I believe it was already in bankruptcy anyway, but it went into bankruptcy, it was due to come out. Now, under bankruptcy rules, there's a 70 year term. You can be bankrupt for 70 years and then you come out of it. 70 years from 30. Well, that takes us up to um, 2008, wouldn't it? Mm. Oh, no, 2000. Oh, but wait. There was a financial crash in 2008, and guess what? Bankrupt again. We were all about to come out of bankruptcy, so they bankrupt us again. It's, that's all it's, it's all a game. They know all about it. They want us in bankruptcy because it's debt. We're, money is debt. At the end of the day, it is debt. And I'm sure we've all had it where, without even asking your credit card company contacts, we've upped your limit, we've upped your limit. Well, if they do that, and you haven't signed anything, you don't have to pay for it, because you signed a thing for the original limit. And if, if they go out and lend you more, you don't have to pay that. You haven't signed a contract to pay that. They'll try, I'm sure they're working on agreements to try and tighten all these things down. But at the end of the day, they still commit fraud. They're still not letting you know you create the, the currency. You are the only credit. This bill, uh, I was briefly going to tell you about that. The, um, so we're, I A for V, the gas, electric, water. Obviously, I don't pay the TV license anyway because there's nothing that says you have to pay. Um, and I'm sure if you go on YouTube, you'll find loads of uh, clips where people are standing up for themselves and telling the uh, T capita Big, big company, <coughs> bigger than you can imagine. They're, they've got their fingers in every pocket. They, um, people are basically standing up, filming them. The biggest thing you can do, if you, if you decide you don't want to pay your TV license, I, all I did was send it in, I'll have access off. And I got, a, I got a letter back from TV licensing basically saying, we're not going to send anyone round to visit you. And 
we're not we're, we're not going to write to you for two years. However, we may use alternate means to see if you're watching telly. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't watch telly anyway, but there's some great uh, stuff out there that you can get at the moment, which lets you watch catch-up TV. You get this box, and you can play all the catch-up channels. You, so you're waiting 10 minutes to an hour. You can watch all the stuff that's on there, if, you, if you're that brainwashed that you still want to watch all the stuff that's on there. Um, and then two years after this, you'll get another letter saying, we're just checking to see if your licensing needs have changed. Uh, I've got what? Is someone a question? Well, as you can, well, we've been t saying that for a long time. I, mean, I don't watch TV anyway, but for anyone that does want to still watch it, I advise you, even if you get your laptop near it or a computer near it, and just watch it on catch up on the internet. That way, even if they use these exotic things they're claiming that ha they have, they've been issuing war getting war warrants issued for empty houses. So, how accurate is this digital equipment they've been using? <laughs> Mark, they actually came to my door, I had a bit of fun with them, mate. Um, my TV was actually on, I don't really watch it, my TV was on, I had the TV file come, I'd done no contract with them through the post, yeah? Because a long story short, they turned up on my door, my TV was on, I had a bit of fun with them, and I said, listen, if you want to disconnect BBC services from your TV, <laughs> I'm not coming through. I even showed them, I said, look, there it is, it's on, I'm not going to fucking lie to you. They said, if you want to disconnect it, feel free, but in the meantime, fancy the free service, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a good way to go down things, but be careful, you do have to know what you're doing. I mean, they could at some point come back at you. <coughs> that was 2011, they sent us a, a letter of reply that they would come and visit the property in 2015 to see the circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> we love them ones. Yeah, the, the, the easiest thing is just to phone them up and say you don't need a TV licence, or as I did, I sent a denial of access to them and I got that letter back saying we're not going to chase you. <laughs> I, I just find that I, that's how, like I say I, I've got a stack of bailiff letters and they've never visited once and all I do is I get anyone new first thing I hit them with is a denial of access and I just wait for them to turn up and they don't I, get, I got that the uh, RANPR cameras are in your area today great so what take a picture <laughs> well so we you must remind me if I go off topic, because I do tend to drift off. He, he usually drags me off over there. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Anyway, uh, so we're A for V, the gas, electric, uh, and water. And for the next six months, they couldn't find the payment. We sent them a promise, you know. But they then sent it up to a, a, our office in Scotland. And they says, well, we can't find it. If, if, you know, if you check your bank account, says, well, it's a promise, you know. Oh, right, okay. Anyway, eventually, after about the three or four months, they decide, oh, I see what he's doing. So they decide to take the court and get a warrant of entry. So they apply to Nottingham Court, Magistrates Court, for a warrant of entry to fit a prepayment meter. So I simply said, now, this worked at the time. You're going to have to do some tweaking if you want to get it to work again. I simply sent a notice off to have the warrant struck out because I'd sent letters to the CEO of the company explaining this and explaining that and I was mentioning this rule and mentioning that rule they're all I have got copies I can send you if you want to have a look at these sort of things and perhaps add things or take things out yourself um, and also pointed out that there were so many things that they'd done wrong that if they issued a warrant that would be breaking the law and they duly struck the warrant out uh, do you know they're printing their own warrants yes now? Capita, a lot of bailiffs are printing their own warrants and a lot of bailiffs are actually getting the warrants, the pieces of paper they claim to be warrants, sent to their mobile phones and are trying to use that as evidence of a warrant. <laughs> Telling you that's what they're doing, if they do that they want arresting. There was a, 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 a lad we have in Nottingham who was, taking it to, was being taken to court to get a warrant of entry. While he was actually in court, 
fighting this warrant of entry, they broke in and fitted a prepayment meter before they'd even got a warrant. This is how lawless they are. Anyway, to cut the, to cut the short story down a bit, because uh, as I say, we're not going to be on this too long, hopefully. Um, so they came um, the first time with the warrant officer, Locksmith. Um, the police eventually turned up. But basically, the first time, I've got the front gate open, we've got the front door open, and you've got the warrant officer there. He says, yeah, you can go in if you want, but if you step, step one foot on there, you're trespassing. So he, he refused to, to step a foot. The locksmith refused to step a foot. Um, and then a friend, my friend starts to turn up with, with cameras and that. And we're, oh, the thing to be is calm. It's a very stressful situation, but it's all of the utmost importance to be calm. Just talk to them. And that's what, all my friends are really calm like that. And we're just talking, explaining what was going on, why we were saying this, why we were doing that. And eventually, at a, they got there about 11 o'clock. It was about 2 o'clock when the, the warrant officer eventually got the word from his boss to call the police. In fact, he was ordered to call the police. And so, fair play to him. He picks up, calls the police, says, yeah, I'm trying to uh, issue a warrant of entry, but I can't gain access. And the first thing the police says, are they being violent or aggressive? And he said, no, actually, they're being perfectly reasonable. Oh, well, oh, be a couple of hours before we can get anyone out to you then. <laughs> <laughs> they want violence. If, you, if there's none of that, there's nothing they can do. And it was about an hour and a half later before two female cop women turned up. And all, all we'd asked him, and the, the warrant officer was actually a really decent bloke actually, we'd said, okay, you can, I'll, I'll let you go in now without anyone coming up, just provide us with, uh, I think it was Eons or whoever company, Scottish and Southern, can you provide us with your insurance company's details? And he goes, well that's fair, that's a reasonable request isn't it? So he phones up, can, yeah, can you just want the insurance and they'll let us in. Oh. Apparently we can't give you them, you've got to write in for them. Anyone know why? Because I would make an insurance claim against them. And this is why they wouldn't give them over the phone. But you can still write in, in fact I suggest you do write in asking for the insurance details. This is also a very interesting thing to use with solicitors, not so much insurance details, but it is insurance. They have a separate, solicitors cover their own insurance details. If they get a claim, well they actually once, they, they do have an insurance, and if they get a claim made on their insurance, they then have to be liable themselves. So there's no way they want to ever get a claim on their insurance details. If, if a, a particular lawyer is being particularly prattish with you, ask for his uh, insurance details and bar number. Yes, yes. So, uh, eventually the police turn up and by this time most of the friends have gone, just me there. And they still stood outside the gate, the, the fitter and the warrant officer. These two cop women turn up. And some things, some, I'm thinking, what's going on? There's something, I've got to do something here. And so anyway, while they were there, I thought, right, so I'll just get it squared, what's going on? So I says to the, the fitter, so you're coming in to remove the meter and that's it, yeah? And he goes, yeah. I says to, to the warrant officer, you're coming in to remove the meter and that's it, yeah? He goes, yeah. And obviously I wanted this because I want them to take their property and I can, I can fit my own meter. I'd already wrote off to the energy minister asking me if this was true uh, and giving him a set time to reply. If he didn't reply, obviously I'd well, deem it as it is true. And of course, he never, supplied, never replied. So we, we get into the house now. The warrant officer, locksmith, not locksmith, the fitter, the two cops. While he's in the house, he gets a phone call. It's his boss. Are you in? Yes, yes. Right, fitter prepayment meter. Now, the warrant officer, he was thinking, he, honestly, he worked for this guy. He's got to do what he's got to do. But he's already, I've got him in contract basically, I've got two cops as witnesses. But he agreed he was just coming to take the meter. That's a verbal contract and two cops as witnesses, a very powerful contract. However, he's got to do what his boss says, so he's on and on, what can I do? In fact, he says, that could cause problems. Yeah, damn right it could. He's thinking, what can he do? So he, he turns to the fitter, who's removing my meter at the time, and says, you're prepared to fit a prepayment meter? The fitter goes, nope. So he hangs up, goes, okay, take it. Shut the meter, <laughs> left. The warrant officer stayed on my doorstep for a further hour as I was explaining about chemtrails, the banking system. <laughs> <laughs> and it was only when it started to rain that he actually left. But that's someone that certainly was put on the path of waking up. Now, what I did then, I got somebody that's professional in that particular area to come and fit my meter, which I bought. And... This now, this is now October, so it was, was starting to get a bit nippy. This is, actually I'll see what one it is. 
2011. And we get this, so he gets the own meter fitted and everything's hunky dory throughout Christmas. Then December, we get a British gas guy knocking at the door asking to see the meter. I told him to piss off. Well, not with British gas and never has. This is where you find out that if you think there's all these separate companies, they're not. British gas still are still in charge of all of them. Because when we says, well, we're not with British, oh, I'm with Eon then. We're not with you. Oh, Scottish and Southern. So we, who, he's got his British gas badge. So it just shows you, they still own it all. It's just an illusion that there's all these separate companies to give you a better value. Does anyone feel they've had a better value from these different companies? Right, so, anyway, that goes on for a further three months before he notifies me in March that he's going to court to get a no-notice warrant uh, of entry. And a no-notice warrant is where they go to court and they don't have to... Uh, normally, if they're going to apply for a warrant of entry, they have to give you at least 48 hours notice. This gives you a chance to go to court and put your side over and say why you should, you should be issued. Uh, but a no-notice warrant, they don't issue this, they just go straight to court. So, what I did, we went down to the court. We went to where they issue the warrants. We said, is there any warrants being issued for this address? No, they said. Is there any other court in here that would do it? No, they said. So, okay, fair enough. Take details. If anyone turns up, let us know. Said, yeah, yeah, okay, it's not down. It's not. And about a week later, I'm actually in the bath. It was red hot. I remember it well. Because, you know, when you've got free gas, it can have it. <laughs> the house was hot as well. In fact, people were walking past the house and had to cross over because it was like glowing. <laughs> Anyway, so eventually he turns up, and I, I, I can hear someone downstairs that had one of those Yale locks, but having suspected something like this might happen, hey, it was always on lock, but I'd also put some nails in the door frame. So what they do is they use a, a plastic card that they slide in, and they slide it up, and it just opens them Yale locks in seconds, literally seconds. But they couldn't get in because the nails I'd put and because it was locked. So then I come down and I, I start to panic a bit because I'm on my own. You know, you, you do panic. Even I panic when I'm on my own. <coughs> and so I make a few calls and then people start turning up. Uh, then they're coming around the back door, trying to get in the back door. I barricade, tie it all up and that. But it's all locked up. And Anyway, it carries on. We keep asking to see the warrant. They show us a little bit of the warrant through the window. Not signed, of course. Um, we ask them for a copy of the warrant. Now, whenever a warrant's issued, they are supposed to leave you with a copy of the warrant. Unless... It's a fraudulent warrant, in which case they won't leave it. Guess what? I've never got a copy. Ask the court, can we have a copy? We don't hold them copies. It's the company holds them. Oh, right, OK. So you're telling me that this company basically issues their own warrants. That's the long and short of it. They issue their own warrants. The police will act on them. They don't care. They don't know nothing about one. Although, to be fair, the ones that are having dealing with people like yourselves that are awake are starting to realise there's something going on. So, about, again, it's about uh, one or two o'clock when they finally decide they're going to start drilling the lock on the back door. And you can see this on YouTube. Uh, and it takes the guy two hours to drill this lock. Some locksmith. Mind you, it's better than the one at Port Tolbert, but I must admit. Uh, and we're handing cups of tea out the window to our friend. We even, we even offer the locksmith and the cops a cup of tea, you know. But they, they all declined. We wouldn't have put anything in it. I'm sure they were thinking we would, but we're not like that. You know, it's all fair. We understand that they're just in fancy uniform, think, think they're doing a job, when in actual fact they're just being used. Um, eventually they get in, they drill the lock out, and uh, they come in. And With hindsight, I could have handled it differently, and I should have handled it differently. But at the time, you can imagine buzzing, adrenaline, and police, and British gas guy. The, guy, the British gas guy that came round, I said to him, he's not allowed in, and he, he, he didn't even attempt to get in. And so they come into the door. Now, again, this is with hindsight. What I should have done, said, as soon as they got the door open and stepped in, is the warrant served? It's a warrant of entry. So, of course, they've got entry, so they're going to have to say yes. OK, do one. Yeah, the warrant served. That's all the warrant was, was entry. Once they've got entry, you don't have to allow them to do anything else. They'll try and say it's part and parcel of this, that we're looking at the meter, but that's nothing. The warrant of entry is a warrant of entry, and that's all. But I let him, let him in at the time, you know, heads racing and whatnot. And so they come over and they eventually take the meter. And then they send me a bill. Apparently I'd used £2,341 in six months. Oh, plus the last, the £700 that was a made-up bill anyway, so. And they passed, they eventually, after sending numerous bills, oh, it was Atlantic. 
Um, numerous bills. Then they pass it to this company, LCS. These are like big to do debt collectors. These collect heavy, you know, these. Uh, so I sent letter one, two, three of the, to them, and that was about the last I heard of them. That was it. That's the end of the A for B. Um, we moved out shortly after, and we're somewhere, somewhere else now, and if the bill gets too high again, <laughs> getting it again. It's, it's, I, I don't mind paying for things when it's a reasonable price, but when you read that the gas electric companies have all been price fixing to make it more expensive for everyone, well, why are we paying them anything? <coughs> Um, from I've done some of the stuff myself to myself. Uh, what I've realised is that the uh, perceived energy suppliers, um, which is gassy on structures, of them, are actually charging you for it passing through their equipment. Yes, that's yeah, correct. That's right, yeah, yeah. Well, National Grid actually supply it free of charge, yeah. but you get charged for anything that passes through their property, their meter, basically. Yeah. Now, when they came. Do, do we own National Grid still on? We did. We do. We do still own it. So don't know where he gets his money from, but we do still own it, yeah. Um, so they charge you for anything that goes through their property. Now, when they came back and drilled my lock, they were coming to take the meter. That was all. That was all they were interested in. They, the guy who took it claimed he was taking it to use against me to prosecute me. That was over two years ago. Now, I know justice is supposed to slow. Of course, justice is just as. Uh, but... Two years is a bit long. They're basically, they were just there to take steal the meter. That's all they were interested in. And that was it. That's what they did. And this time they turned it off outside as well. And if, if we'd still been there and it had been colder, I would have turned it back on and had another meter fitted. But as it was, no need. That's my A for V story. Um, with water, I, I, they don't even send me a bill anymore. That's because they don't want to admit that A for V works. Because if they did keep sending me bills, and I did keep sending them A for V's, and they just kept sending me a bill, and I kept sending them A for V's, and they kept sending me a bill and kept sending them A for V's, well, that would prove that it's being used, <laughs> that they're actually cashing them. But just getting one lot of cash for the amount of customers, because everybody will find out once, they, once that happens, then everybody do it. This is why it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do, they will do their best to stop you knowing about this method of payment. And I wouldn't suggest anybody even try it until you've done extensive research into it. It should work. We've even got a, on, our, on, the, on the, the YouTube, it's even got a banker being interviewed by John Witterick. Uh, and the banker openly admits that it is under the law he has to accept promissory notes. And then he's asked, would he accept one if someone brought, it in, brought a promissory note into him? And he goes, no, I'd just break the law. Banks, bankers know they have to accept promissory notes. And they keep saying, we say, refer to uh, Lord Denning, and they'll say, oh, you're interpreting it wrong. Well, how can you... He basically said, a promissory note is to be treated as cash. I don't see any other way of interpreting that apart from a promissory note is cash. But they use all their terms to try and discredit and, and poo-poo it. That's irrelevant. Until you've done enough research, don't try it on gas and electric. By all means, you can try it on water, although they've, they've, they've changed the tap now. Because obviously, I did, again, <coughs> we tend to tell everyone when uh, something works. And everybody started doing it. A lot of the time now, they're seeming to go straight to court. Try and get you straight to court. Um, I, I've got the water bills uh, coming in now. So if I just send them a promising board? I wouldn't do that that way anymore. No. I've changed, because they've changed tap. They're basically, if they, they, they suspect that you don't know fully what you're doing, first thing they'll do is they'll have you straight to court. Now, for me, it would make no difference because they're still not going to get paid. Right. So it's just going to cost them money. In fact, the latest they tried with me about three months ago, they sent me a, a letter through saying, we're going to apply for a warrant of entry. I thought, oh, <laughs> another one, eh? <laughs> not new to that. <laughs> anyway, I was going to send them a notice back accepting it and saying, just apply to me for permission. I have a strict time scale. You have to be here between this time and this time. Uh, and you have to be gone by this time. And, and in the end, I thought, ah, screw it. I'll just not bother, I just eat. I wrote the letter, I had it all printed up and that ready to go and I just left it on the side and I said, ah. and about a month, six weeks later, I get another bill. You still owe this much, pay now. Just ignore it now. If, if they were going to go to court, it's going to cost them money to get a warrant of entry. For a start, it, they could come to the door, we'll let them read the meter. I've got nothing wrong with them reading the meter. I don't care, they can take the meter for, for all I care, but I'm not going to pay for it. Because we don't have to. It's our water. You know these clouds, how much do they pay them? 
And they're putting all the crap that they put in it. Fluoride and oh, just so much crap that goes in the water, it's unbelievable. Just a quick question. I understand that cash is basically a currency note backed by the tax, the you know, future tax of the population and such. It's backed by your sweat equity. Yes, yeah, that's right. Um, a currency note. Exactly the same way as it does with a ten pound note. Right. You you only accept it as payment yep. because you believe you can so go to the bar and you can buy a beer. Okay, so it's all just because it's it's it's, it's yeah. all, everyone's belief that that value. is value valuable. Yeah. There, there is no value except for you because you have to go and earn that. So you you're basically going and using your labour to take their fake promissory notes, mm -hmm. which they then tax you with, yeah. Yeah. to go and pay things when if it was. Normal. You go and do dig someone's garden. They give you food, or beer, or what, whatever it is, whatever you come to term to agreement with. And then we, there's no tax on that. The government getting none of that. In fact, there's a lot of these communities building up where people with certain skills are going to. Well, well, we'll, well I'll work for you. You. And that's the way we need to go to get out of this. Bullshit. That's for Canada only. We don't have the 96 thing over here. No. no. I looked at that and I thought, yay! And then we haven't got it. I, I'm fairly sure there will be something else over here, but whether we've... Every single one that I get has got a 73 on the bottom Yeah, whether that's it or not, you could be the first to try that one out. So I'm trying it. Uh, there's different code numbers for different uh, debts or obligations, so it's hard to try. It's not just one number like, like yeah. Bob and says. Mm. Very hard to do the one. The thing is, they send you the bill, but then if you look at the, the thing at the bottom, it's the exact same thing. It is an item of credit, and it says. It's, uh, it's a species. Uh, one of the first things I've tried, yeah. they won't accept it. And each code, for different kinds of financial obligations, you've got different code numbers. And we can't get out. Oh, I can't get access to what that's going to do. Right, well, while we're briefly on the subject of promissory notes, in actual fact. Can I just say, now, the water. <laughs> I told them I moved, but stayed there. That's a good ploy. I never accepted the paperwork, and, and this has gone for two years. And yeah, they, yeah. Never I've never sent anything. I had a yeah. water bill addressed to the occupier, and I've said. I that yeah. Well, I actually sent them um, a, a letter last year saying there were no persons or corporations at this <coughs> or on this land. And so I got a letter back. We understand there's no co persons or corporations on this land. So can the occupier fill in, <laughs> fill in this? Yeah. Well, they've, they've immediately now sent, they've not faffed about with that now. Um, the original uh, no contract return to sender was actually sent back to me. And it keeps on going backwards and forwards. <laughs> the, same, the same bill. What? what, and, what? I've got, and I've now got um, their legal department. While we're on that subject, I'll just briefly share a friend's um, tale with you. They had a house, couldn't make the payments. Unfortunately, they uh, they thought they might get some equity out of it. Um, they ended up owing around forty grand on top, and they they were, as you can imagine, very concerned. And they spoke to me about it. I said, just use the letters. Again, it was a big, like ICS or LCS. I think LCS. It's a big company chasing forty grand. They used the letters, and apart from the odd letter every three to four months, that's it. Forty grand written off. Not that it was ever their debt in the first place, anyway. Um, but we were briefly now. This is this is something. Some ask for promise. Now I'm not saying that the way I do promissory notes is a, is correct. It's stuff. It, I, I've mangled things together that other others use. This is why there's no definitive note out there yet. When one works, don't worry. Everyone will know, and we'll all be printing them. This is how I do them, though. You can get this off the site. It's the promissory note and the pr pr amount up there. I put stamps on all of them. This is for. Does anyone not know about the stamps? Why I do that? <coughs> right. What that does. I found, again, I found that out about three years ago. This thing actually makes you the postmaster. It means that if this goes to court, the judge can't put it like face down like that. Can't put it there and say I see nothing. Well, of course he can't because he's face down. Sometimes they even put it the right, right way around and read the, the white background. They don't read the letters. They still say, I see nothing. But when you do this, they can't do that because if they do that, they're breaking postal law, which is above them. And the judge could go to prison. 
And all you do, again, it's up, that's on the promise note, but if I showed you on a letter, it's, it'd probably be easier to, to, to see there. So what we do is, at the top here, and if you, if you want to see how to do this, if you look up, um, what's his name? I can't remember, I'll, I'll come back to that one. Uh, you're right at the top here, again in red, and all these marks here are just so that my scanner picks it up. <laughs> With the autograph, your thumbprint, now it wants to be on the right hand side. Just like letters, I, do you all know that letters have a, a debtor side and a creditor side? Anyone not know that? Okay. Letters have a, a debtor side and a creditor side. The debtor side is the left hand side. The creditor side is the right hand side. Now when you're at school, what side were you ta taught to put your name and address? Over there, weren't you? Where, where were you taught to sign it? Over the left hand side. That's the debtor. Now they, the teachers don't know this, but it is. This is why you'll see, you'll notice I've signed it down here on the same side. I've stayed on the, the creditor side of the form. This is the debtor side. This is where their details go. And usually they go right at the bottom because they're a corporation that's so low, they're so low below a flesh and blood man that they don't even really want being on the paper. But we're, they're there for the time being. So credit side, debtor side, debtor side, credit side. And the same with the stamp. That has a credit side and a debtor side. It's the right hand side. The right hand side is where you put your thumbprint. Uh, also you might see here, again this is stuff that we've, we've learned as time's gone by. Now, I've signed by colon with a signature through it. It actually needs to be from the bottom left to the top right, by colon with a signature through it. By colon means you're not, um, you're not bound by anything in there. You can't be prosecuted for anything in that document. The reason, <laughs> you'll like this, the reason it needs to be bottom left to top right, now you've all heard the, 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 the saying, the pen's mightier than the sword. Well, when you draw your sword, you're drawing it from bottom left to top right, and that's what it's all about. Ridiculous as it seems, that has more power than the way this, is, this was done, but then this was 2011 again. So, with the autograph, thumbprint on the right hand side of the stamp, signing by colon with your name, <coughs> bottom left to top right. We come to the stamp down the bottom here. We write seal above it, again on the right hand side you put the thumbprint, bottom left to top right your signature, oh date under each stamp as well by the way, and you write copy claim by colon, sign through it like you were swishing a sword. And also, on the back as well, down at the bottom there, it's just signed through, thumbprint signed through and dated. And again, this line is just so the scanner picks up the whole page, otherwise you end up with a big picture of the, the stamp on your scanner. Now that makes you the postmaster. It makes you more powerful than anyone else apart from another postmaster. That's to do with postal law. Again, I got interviewed on... Um, a few years ago, and I did a talk all about that. If you go on YouTube, you can hear it talk uh, when I wasn't so um, here, sort of thing, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right. Was there anything I was talking about that you wanted to go back over? Uh, water meters. Uh, sorry, switching the um, gas, a friend of mine, who came out to see us the other day, <coughs> and uh, he just had to let us know that he used to work for Seventh Trent Water, not to get shot and uh, he used to drive around in the van and his boss used to say we have to go and turn somebody's water off but they were only allowed to do it for five minutes just to give them a warning and he says they never turn anybody's water off and he worked for the water authority it's in the water act uh, water board act <coughs> 1991 i think it is where it states they can't turn your water off if any of you were wondering yeah. they, just do it they can't even put a, a slow it down to yeah. a drip so they have done it i'm not i'm not saying they won't they have done it to some um, and the guy who they did it do, he went out and took the device out and just connected it back up and... He from. wants to do an interview on the video. So Here, here's one where we got from... It started off with Buchanan, Clark and Wells, and then rather quickly it went over to... <coughs> GP, GPB, Geoffrey Parker Bourne Solicitors. If you've had any dealings with them, three letters work every single time. The only time that they even push it is if you've got property. But I think, with that, with the deed of assignment and the novation, I think they can't even go for a charging order on the property with, if you're asking for them things. So, again, it's just my opinion that, so don't take it as gospel, but I think that, they, I don't see how they can go for that if they can't prove 
that they've lawfully sold the debt or anything along them lines. Anyone want to talk? Any, know anything else about that particular subject or anything? <laughs> Um, now, this isn't my particular area of expertise, but I would challenge them for the, uh, the novation and the deed of assignment. And if they can't produce that, then that charging order's unlawful. Yeah, it's void, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> they have to give you the deed, they have to give you the, the original stuff you have to, if they don't have it, it's void. Yeah. When you're using B.C. dot for your signature... I use by colon. But it all means the same thing as does dot, dot, dot. It basically uh, stops you from having any legal ties to the documents. Okay, so the VC is the same. Yes. But yeah. By yeah. Yeah. Is it VC under duress? Yeah. It can be. When would you use that? Sorry? When would you use that, please? Uh, for instance, if you get nicked by the cops and they uh, insist on you getting your stuff back because you've got to sign this to release your stuff, you could use it then, or you could, could, or you could just refuse to sign. But then it, it, it's how far you're prepared to go. If you're going to want your stuff back straight away, you're going to sign. Well, by colon, DC, whichever method you want. You can even sign it under duress. It doesn't have to be your signature. This is the thing that most don't get. You don't have to put your signature down here. And that, that, it's as simple as that. Right. With the deck clip, hang on. A for V. Accepted for value. It, there's a whole section on the site if you want to have a look about and read through. Get out of debtfree.org. Yeah. Right now, with, with the, the, the simplest thing to do is once you've dealt with a debt collector and he's passed it on three or four times, which is where my I'm at now. I don't use the letters anymore. I don't need them anymore. All I do is either send their letter back to them with some extra crap stuck in it so it's heavier. Or I'll, um, if they've got a return address on the back, I'll wrap an Argos catalogue up, stick their letter onto the back of the catalogue and post that to the back of them. But only if it's not by TNT. They do tend to use TNT a lot and that's because if you send it uh, return to sender, it goes back to the Royal Mail, Royal Mail return it to TNT and TNT just bin it. So if in them circumstances I would take the letter out of the envelope Put it with the Argos catalogue and wrap it all up, and then put a one piece stamp on. They have to pay. They have to pay postage their end, and the one piece stamp means that it has to be delivered. And in these cases, when you're doing this, try and find a post office box because it goes straight in, and they get straight billed for it. So if, it, if I mean, normally we say look up for a proper address, but when you're doing that, if they've got a post office box, send it to the post office box. Uh, when, when it's got to a certain stage, yeah. So, I mean, when the debts have been passed on three or four times, um, that, I, I don't, don't, I don't deal with them anymore. I just do that. That's how I deal with them. You'll see, I've even posted a few up, up there. We have time for a cat, uh, time for a present, things like that. We have. I, I, I'm not greedy. Sometimes I'll cut the catalog, catalog into four and just send them the first bit and then write on their letter. You want the rest of the catalog? Send me some more letters. <laughs> yes, that's how it is. Anyone, 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 any questions? So long does that deed of assignment thing and the delegation and innovation thing work with council taxpayers? Um, it should do once it's been passed on. Because what you're asking for is when they pass it on. So when they pass it on to a, a, a bailiff, then it should do. They should have it. Um, but again, I'm not 100% on that, but in the way I see things, it absolutely should. Right, so I take it we've all got rid of the TV licenses, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, right, well, I'm going to move on now to health side of things. Um, oh, first, thanks for who gave me the Frank Skinner DVDs. It's perks of the job. Perks of the job. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> right. Um, I'm using the television to watch those on the YouTube, so. Has anyone heard of Solitaire? Right, this is for asthma and almost any breathing conditions. What you have in here um, is Romanian rock salt crystals and you basically breathe like an inhaler uh, for 20 minutes a day 
It's all you need. Uh, and it somehow clears up the a a a a asthma. Now, it was on Good Morning TV or TVM or whatever they are. Actually. You can tell how long it was ago since I watched them programmes. And Dr. Chris Searle, if actually you look up Solitaire, you'll, you'll see him where he's, doing, he's actually talking about it on the morning show. And he's saying two of his uh, assistants had asthma and using that one has come off the inhalers almost straight away and the other one is finding tremendous improvements. If you know anyone with that asthma, well worth getting it. It costs, uh, that, when I bought this it was 20 quid or you could get two for 30, so I got two for 30. I don't know if you just mention again what it's called? Solitaire, S-A-L-I-T-A-I-R. Oh. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, brilliant. So, I recommend it. I mean, told me about that. Told him. He told me about two years ago. The lad, uh, he's 13 now, but when he was 12, he had asthma, and within, within about six days of using that, um, and then he uses it once a month, three weeks of asthma, it's complete. So, do you hear that? Yeah, yeah, so, this six, this lad, I, mean, I told him about it a couple of years ago, his last started using it, within six days of using it, he's, he's not taking the puffer things, he's just. It's just using that, what, every month or three months? Well, it doesn't use that pretty much now, but it went down to once a month, and then eventually he doesn't use it at all. Well, it went down to once a month, and now he doesn't even use it at all, and that's just gone. So, 20 quid, it'd be the best 20 quid you've ever spent if you know anyone that's right. Um, some of you have seen me talk about these pinhole glasses. I've got some here, I've got some. If you, if you need glasses to um, read, then by all means I'll let you have a go of these. <coughs> Take your glasses off, put these on. There's no lenses in these, these are just pinholes. What they do is they force your eyes to focus. After, as we get older, well, you lot anyway, because I'm getting older now, I've done the getting older thing. As we get older, our eyes get lazy and they stop focusing, and this forces them to focus again. And you use these for 20 minutes a day, and you can increase your eyesight back to where, before you needed glasses, so you won't need glasses again. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be perfect for everyone. Some people struggle with it, some people get on fine with it. I don't need the glasses, but I don't need one nice. glasses either. When you've got these, you can't afford it. They cost me ten quid off uh, an inter a, a website in the UK, or you can get them for about two quid off eBay. Although these are better quality than the the, the eBay ones, but they, they still do the same job. So if you've got any eyesight problems, that will assist you. Pinhole glasses. Where did you get those from? They I got them from jdharris.co.uk. Well. If they do what I said, makes you wonder why the opticians haven't got them outside the shop, doesn't it? Oh, because they'd be out of business, so it does make a difference. Right. You, you may or may not have heard me talking about colloidal silver. Well, this device, this is the Bob Beck device, and this makes colloidal silver. I'm going to make a glass. Anyone wants to try it? They can do. Does it make it longer? <laughs> 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 Can someone tell me when 10 minutes have passed because it will be ready? Now, because this is tap water, it will have many contaminants in it and you'll probably find a, a, a grey silvery mist formed down near the bottom. And that's because the, the silver ions that are, that are being passed off by the electrolysis are attaching to the contaminants in the water and they're weighing it down. All you have to do is give it a stir up so it all spreads out again and you sip away. Now, for the last seven years, I've not hardly had a cough, cold, sore throat or anything. When I get one coming, I'll make myself a pint of colloidal silver and I'll sit there, usually on the internet, sipping away, and after about an hour, whatever it is, cough, cold, sore throat is gone. Can it help to remineralise um, distilled water? I use, only use distilled water. I use distilled water. But because they haven't, well, have got tap water here, that's why I'm using tap water. But yeah, I, I use distilled water. There's a lot of rumours that it, it leaches stuff out of your system, and it does. It leaches any inorganic elements out of your system. Stuff that's not supposed to be there, it will take it out. Was that distilled water? Yes, yeah, distilled cool. water. Is that reverse osmosis? No, no. So distilled is better. Reverse osmosis is good, but distilled is better. And you can get the distillers that are about 150 quid, yeah. maybe even 120 quid off eBay. But that, that JD Harris website, that sells them as well. That's where I got mine from. Which I should be working for them, I should be on bonus. Um, now, while this is making colloidal silver, and there's a book if you want to find out about colloidal silver. It's difficult to get a hold of, but it, tell, it tells you everything in here. Now, one of the things that they put out to try and poo-poo colloidal silver 
was a, a thing called a gearer. And that's where a guy uh, a, a apparently drunk it and it's turned him <coughs> blue. He basically looked like a smurf. What the, the fuller story to that is, he actually added salt to it to speed it up. Now, it takes 10 minutes. Why are you going to need to speed it up? Anyway, this salt he added to it had some sort of reaction, and he rubbed it on his face, and it turned him blue. In the book, it tells you how you can reverse that. So everything that they try and poo-poo can be reversed. What's the title of that book, Silver? It's just called sil uh, Colloidal Silver. Where did you get it from? Uh, I got it off the actual author, Mark Metcalf, this guy in the back. Mark 9. Yeah, Mark 9, but his, his title on here is Mark Metcalf. Is that the Bob Beck's device? Oh. This is the Bob Beck device, yeah. Um, what you would do, while it's making silver, I'll explain what the device does. You put one of these straps round your wrist, and you get some electrodes. It does come with a little pamphlet, although it doesn't tell you that it cures anything, because they wouldn't be allowed to put that in if it did. Um, and you get some cotton sheaths, you put over the ends of these metal rods, you dampen the cotton sheaths, and then you, with the strap around your wrist, you put them one either side of your wrist, and you turn the machine on, and your hand will start going like that, because it's putting electricity through your hand, and it's going into your muscles. So, it doesn't with everybody. Uh, there's a friend that I had that just sat there, and nothing happened. That, I, I can't, can't explain that, but it, that's how it, where it was with them. Um, I got the first one of these about seven or eight years ago. I mean, I'd seen a talk by Bob Beck, and I suggest you all have a look, look him up on the internet. And in it, it's a, just under two hours talk, I think it's a minute and 17 or a minute and 19, and in it he said that this device cures cancer. And I thought, get that. If it cured cancer, it'd be on the news. <laughs> yes, yes, I was a little sleepish back then. Uh, anyway, I thought, well, it's, it, it seemed quite knowledgeable, so I thought I'd give it a try, and so I ordered one. Simply just for the kind of silver by itself is fantastic. But, I thought I'd zap myself as well, make sure there's nothing hidden in there. Anyway, six months after I'd got the device, a friend um, had to go to the doctors, he sent it to the hospital, the hospital got back to the touch with her, says, your doctor will contact you for the results, can you then go to your doctor? Anyway, a few days later, the doctor phones up and says, yeah, can you come in for your results, then can you bring someone with you? Now, straight away, if any of you has ever had that call, you know that's not good news. So, off they go to the doctors. And they go in the doctors, and um, the doctor gets the x-ray x -ray of the chest. He pops it up on the machine. He goes, you see this big black area on, area on your chest here? Just here. So, right, well, that's cancer. I want you back at the hospital in a week. I want to see how much it's spread. So, they come out of the doctors, and they're calling all the friends and relatives up, saying... Someone's going to die, they're going to die. And they call me up and they go, oh, don't worry, I'll just cure it with the Bob Beck device. You can imagine the response they got. You're crazy, you are. Now, Bob Beck says that you need to use it for five days for a full cure from cancer. Originally, it was 30. In his later work, he found out it was five days. The, the, the one who had the cancer only came down for three, and they only used it because they didn't think it would work. It was two hours a day for three days, so that's six hours. The following day, they didn't come down. The following day after that, they're back at the doctor's at the hospital, sorry, and they run all the tests and x-rays and they could find no cancer. That was seven years ago and that, put, that being is still walking around today, cancer-free. Baking soda. Baking soda is another good one. There's so many that you... unbelievable. Can hemp oil, yes. Now, it's not the stuff you get in the shops, not made out of seeds, it's actually from the plant. So if you know anyone that's making those lovely <laughs> ingredients, <laughs> the stuff that they throw away, you can make the oil out of. Now, they usually have a problem getting disposing of it. If you go around with some buckets and say, we'll happily, I'll happily take your rubbish for you, you can make it out of that. Look up Rick Simpson's story, and you'll see oh, it cures more, more than you can imagine. It's really in the Sorry? It's really in the yes, that's true. Well, <laughs> depends if you want to be up cleaning the house all day long. Then, yeah, I suggest the Indica. It will make you tired if there's something wrong with you. Um, uh, and if it's not something wrong with you, you will be extremely happy. <laughs> extremely happy. More happy than you've ever seen. In fact, I, I, there was someone uh, I know, uh, I was talking to them about, they, they'd taken some for the first time, and they said that they were there uh, on, watching stuff on YouTube, and they had to pause it because they just burst out laughing. And they had no idea what they were laughing at. And it was like that for the rest of the night. That's the sort of effect. If, if there's nothing wrong with you, obviously if there's something wrong with you, all the better. It will knock you out. 
because it's easier to fix you when you're not <laughs> moving around and that it's not and I have I've seen a couple of the guys um, use it and I thought it would have gone the other way around but it went the opposite way the one who I thought would be knocked out was actually whoa and the one who I thought would be was knocked out so this, you can't judge it just by looking at someone whether it's going what how it's going to affect them but all you need to know is if it's making you sleepy sleep because it's going to fix you that's if you can get your hands on it because obviously they don't want this out well it basically is from what I've seen it can cure just about everything is that Rick Simpson Rick Simpson, yeah. yeah. You want to look into worded Bruning. Um, he opened the first ever coffee shop in Amsterdam with the first seed bank in Europe. Yeah. He went and met Rick Simpson and has developed it a bit further, so he says he's guaranteed medicine every time. Because with Rick Simpson, it's, you, the, like you, you say, it's got a different effect. You can't really do it wrong as long as you don't burn it. That's the only thing you can do is burn it. When you, as, as from, from what I can remember from Rick Simpson, so when you're evaporating the, the alcohol off, yeah. Um, and then you get down to the last bit, and it, that's when you, you just keep an eye on it. Uh, but if you keep it on a low gas, it just leave it bubbling away until there's no bubbles. You can get a device that's made in this country called the Smart Still, which will do four litres of it at any one time, and you get 75% of the alcohol in back. There's a, another, there's another cure all pretty much out there as well MMS, Miracle Mineral Supplement. You can still get that at the moment, although they are trying to ban it. Yeah. Um, Joanna Budwig, back in the 50s, she discovered a cure for cancer. She discovered that if you mixed uh, flaxseed oil with natural cottage cheese and mixed it together really well, it produced another enzyme which cured cancer. And she went to the Senate and told them and they chased her out of America. But she did cure many people of cancer. Um, what was her name, sorry? Joan Johanna Budwig. <coughs> that is also something that you can all do, which will make you all a lot healthier. And that's a thing called oil pulling. And all you do with that is you get some organic, if possible, but it doesn't have to be, some cooking oil, flour, uh, sunflower seed oil or, or coconut oil is very popular with it. Um, and you, you get a tablespoonful basically and you put it in your mouth and you just push it around your gums and in and out your teeth for 20 minutes. Don't swallow it though because it will be white and it's full of crap. What your, your, your mouth and your gums basically attach to everywhere else in your body. And while you're doing that oil pulling, you're actually leaching viruses, bacteria, heavy metals, aluminium out of your system. Okay. Now, I say 20 minutes or, or two sets of 10 minutes, whatever you can do. Uh, it will also, you will also find that if you've got loose teeth, your gums start to tighten up around the teeth. It'll clean your teeth as well. And... Make sure you spit it out afterwards, wash your mouth out and brush your teeth because what you're spitting out is toxic. You don't want to be swallowing it. There is sometimes a gag factor. You'll just have to be there with a bowl and just keep going if you, if you want to have a go at it. It is very beneficial. But it's not going to be something you're going to notice after two weeks. After maybe six weeks to eight weeks, you then, if you're doing it every day, you'll notice things. A lot, a lot try it and then give up after a week or two. There's a certain book out which he knows the title of. The Secret to Human Cancer by Dr. Shu, H. Uh, S. U. We're going to do a video on it. You can get it from New Awareness Network in New York. New Awareness Network in New York. Well, I'll have a look on eBay. It's about seven quid. And basically, on page 125, it says, change your belief system, because that's why you've caused cancer to yourself. Mm. And basically, come and see you. Come and see the old lady next door. Give somebody a flower. Say nice things. Mm. Fall in love with yourself. Yeah. Just get rid of any you. belief system that anybody's told you before. Believe in love, happiness. Yeah. A good, Ill, no ill will harm or loss. Mm. No life, you can like yourself. I, I'm just happy. <laughs> I'm just so happy because I just believe in good and not, and not anything else. If you take one of the zeros away, you've got a big problem, haven't you? Right, there's, there's something else I'm just going to briefly mention because it, it's so <laughs> beneficial if you know anyone with the likes of Alzheimer's. Coconut oil cures Alzheimer's. 
get some of that. I mean, I, I, I don't have it yet. Well, some suggest I do, but I don't think I do. But I just have, if I'm having a cup of coffee or tea or anything, I'll just get a dollop of coconut oil, plop that in there, stir it up, and then I'll drink that. And that's, you can do that with them. You can cook with it. You, just eating, yeah, and it will cure outside. They, they found this because uh, a couple, and the, the male partner got severe Alzheimer's and basically couldn't even remember his name anymore. They'd heard about it, they tried it, and now you wouldn't know there was anything, he'd ever had anything wrong with him. He's back to his normal self. Any questions? I'm just ask you a technical question. You're, if I'm not going to say I'm answering, but yeah, you can ask. If somebody's got like terminal cancer of the liver, could this thing give them a chance? Possibly. Um, with the liver, <coughs> you'd need... I can't remember if it, that's one of the lymph systems or not. If it's a yeah. lymph system, does it? I think if it's a well, lymph yeah. system, as well as this, the Bob Beck device here, he also made a pulser, and that was specifically for the lymph system. That it, it pulses an electric charge through, and you can see they, they, they use it on the neck, and, uh, and basically they have a light bulb this side just to show you that the pulse is going through. Put that where your liver is, and that should help sort that out. But, Diet is one of the biggest things. If you can j change to just eating fresh fruit and vegetables. Greens. Yeah, yeah you're, you're going to be raw, raw, food. Food. raw food. Dandelions are a fantastic uh, food source and they've got so many nutrients and, and minerals. Unbelievable. You can look at Andreas Moritz, the amazing liver cleanse. Yeah. So that's something else to look at. Liver cleanses. You can do it as many times as you want to. Uh, three times a day is probably <coughs> as much as you would want to, but um, for 20 minutes a time, you can do it at 10 minutes and then have a break and then have another 10 minutes. It's entirely up to you, but it does leach heavy metals, which is a big problem with all these chemtrails and stuff that's going on, uh, and it takes viruses and bacteria out of your system as well. It whitens your teeth as well, doesn't it? It whitens your teeth as well, yeah. There's also alkaline water. Yes, alkaline waters. Yeah. If you can keep your body well, alkaline, you, you, you're not going to be ill. That's if you actually look in the health section, you can actually make your own toothpaste for a fraction of the price that it normally is, and it'd be a far lot better for you because you won't have fluoride in for a start. Um, well, if you use a, I use a natural toothpaste. Okay, just about to wrap things up. There's just one thing that you might not have heard about yet, because I'm surprised, but many haven't still. In September, September the 6th, we're having a meeting down at um, Bodmin Manor. We're, it's the weekend. We're having a, a weekend festival. We're going to have the likes of Spaniard, Rob, Freeman, Rob, Rob Bollocks, me, and others there. It's going to be a whole weekend event where we get this campsite, and there's, there's some dorms there, so you know, if you get down... Um, it's going to be a fun event and we can get to put names to all these different faces and vice versa. And that's the 6th of September, but the information is in the latest news on Get Out of Debt. And at that, I say uh, thank you. Well,